Good afternoon, and welcome to the July 27th briefing on COVID-19. We've been meeting here for 16 weeks. It's been a long four months since the governor issued his stay home, stay healthy order. During that time, cases in Washington have risen from 2,000 to 50,000 cases, and the deaths have increased from 110 to over 1,500 people. We're in the midst of a global pandemic, and unfortunately, as cares, cases grow, we can expect to see an increase in deaths as well. Yesterday, Governor Inslee indefinitely extended the pause of the Safe Start plan, which means no county will be moving ahead to the next phase. He explained that this is, a, is crucial to have fewer, shorter, and safer interactions outside the home to slow the spread of COVID-19. At times, it can be difficult to deal with the strain of this public health and economic crisis. We want to focus our efforts on recovery because our community has a hardworking entrepreneurial spirit. But most effective thing that we can do right now is stay home, mask up. Whenever you have to leave your house, with so many uncertainties around us, we have to adapt and find new ways to live, work, recreate, learn, socialize, and navigate these changes. And they are not easy. Anna Cordes has been creative in solving problems and keeping focus on our shared vision of the future, a time when we can safely restart public life, socialize with friends and family and coworkers. We need to be intentional with our actions and focus on how to get back to normal. That is why we must remain committed to physical distancing, wearing masks whenever we leave the house. We have to do it because it will save lives and protect our home, the place that we love, Anacortes. Last week, the governor announced changes to the Safe Start plan and identified targeted modifications. These changes limit exposure in restaurants, bars, fitness centers, at weddings and funerals. These new changes also affect family entertainment centers, movie theaters, and card rooms. For weddings and funerals, ceremonies are allowed, but receptions are prohibited. Ceremonies must have a maximum indoor capacity of 20% or up to 30 people, whatever is less. They must have physical distancing. These new changes for weddings and funerals and reception starts August 10th. Restaurants must now require parties to be members of the same household in order to dine indoors. Table size for indoor dining in phase three is reduced to five and occupancy reduced from 75% to 50%. Alcohol service inside restaurants must end by 10 p.m. Outdoor dining and takeout is still allowed for small parties from different households. Gaming areas such as pool tables, dartboards, and video games are closed. Bars will be closed for indoor service, but continue outdoor service. These changes take effect tomorrow, July 30th. In phase two, the number of individuals allowed to use a fitness center is reduced to only five individuals, not including staff. This new rule applies to gyms, fitness centers, indoor pools, ice rinks, volleyball courts, and tennis facilities. Fitness center occupancy in phase three is reduced to 25%, and all group fitness classes will be limited to no more than 10, not including the instructors. The changes will take effect tomorrow, July 30th. We're in phase two, so remember that. We're not even in phase three yet. Indoor family entertainment and recreation centers like mini golf, bowling alleys, and arcades are prohibited from opening, as well as indoor card rooms, indoor movie theaters, and occupancy has been reduced from 50% to 25% when we get to phase three. This month, 
has already accounted for the largest number of COVID-19 cases and the second largest related to hospitalizations in Skagit County. We're seeing hospitalizations at the level we saw them in April. Our county health officer, Dr. Liebrand, is not confident the county will be, be able to approach meeting these metrics in the next two to four weeks. He says that getting to phase three is about getting this virus to a controlled level. This month, we're outpacing the level of cases that we had in April. To move to phase three, a county must have the following. A county must have fewer than 25 cases per 100,000 residents over 14 consecutive days. We currently have 106 new cases per 100,000 residents. A county must have greater than 50 individuals tested for each new case during the prior week. We currently are at 31.4 tests for each new case. The percentage of individuals testing positive must be less than 2%. We're currently at 3.2%. The percentage of beds occupied in the county must be less than 80%. We're currently at 76.7. And lastly, the percentage of beds occupied by COVID-19 cases must be less than 10%. And we're currently at 6.5%. We are meeting only two of the five metrics. The statewide masking order was expanded last week to include all common spaces and private social situations. Basically, unless you have a medical condition that makes it unsafe for you to wear a mask, you should wear a mask at all times, unless you're at home with a member of your own household. On Monday night at our city council meeting, our finance department pre presented its monthly update on the effects of COVID-19 on the city's budget. The city council decided to go back to an annual budget and to move the budget schedule further into the fall. During this time of year, we would normally be in the midst of developing a two-year budget. However, due to the uncertainty of COVID-19, we've had to change the way we envision 2021. We're starting our budget development process later to gain additional information and see how the economy will continue to react to this pandemic. We need to practice caution and conservative budgeting as the federal unemployment benefits have ended this month and unemployment rate in the county continues to be volatile. We do not know how that may affect future sales tax revenue. As the council staff and I continue our in-depth discussions on the 2021 budget priorities, we plan to retain the hiring freeze for non-essential positions and freeze on purchasing new equipment. As the budget is developed, we will focus on public safety, community enrichment, community and economic development, essential services, natural resource sustainability, social services, and a being a responsible government. The governor has extended his eviction moratorium until October 15th, recognizing the devastating impact of COVID and what it has done to some residents' finances. COVID-19 pandemic is causing a sustained economic downturn throughout Washington state. And this moratorium assures that our most vulnerable population are protected from homelessness during this crisis. The city is working on finding more ways to support the vulnerable in our community who may be finding it difficult to make rental payments. We're currently looking at $26,000 in community development block grant and possible federal CARES funding for low to moderate income households um, grants that will help prevent evictions. These funds could support those at less than 80% of the area medium income. So that those families with a combined income of less than $62,700 may be qualify for some rental assistance. The city is coordinating with the Anacortes Family Center 
and the Anacortes Housing Authority to find the best way to administer these funds and reach the Anacortes residents who are in need. The CARES Act provided $600 weekly federal unemployment benefit that expired for most unemployed workers on July 30th. We are awaiting action from the federal government on the continuation or the expansion of unemployment support as the, county, as the country it continues to be impacted by COVID-19. In April, we had an unemployment rate in Skagit County of 19.1%. In May, this rate fell to 16.5%. And the latest unemployment percentage as of June is 11.3%. And that shows that people are getting back to work. It is clear the situation is volatile and our county finds itself dealing with a lot of uncertainty. Our ec economic recovery is closely aligned with our ability to comply with public safety requirements in place. So people, so while people may be getting back to work, we are also starting to see cases of deaths rise. We must remain vigilant in following the guidance of our public health officials. So some good news. So thanks to a very generous anonymous donor here in Anacortes, the Anacortes Senior Center roof that was in dire need of replacement has been completed. With the sudden closure of the center due to the pandemic, we had the golden opportunity to complete the work that would have otherwise taken longer to accomplish. We can't wait to welcome all our seniors, our staff, and our volunteers back to see the finished product. The Parks Department is working on outreach at the Senior Center, but continue to reach out via phone and offer Zoom-type classes as an opportunity to connect. While the Senior Center will not reopen until Phase 4, the staff has been working on ways to expand digital outreach to its patrons now and into Phase 3. Check out the library's website. We reckon, with recommended books for our residents and to be, oh, so with a book for resident dragons and to be entered into the Harry Potter Prize by July 31st, you can see what a dragon is reading online and add those books to your summer reading. Since we're missing seeing you at festivals and events this summer, the library's bringing creativity to you. Register on the kids page to find out about art classes via Zoom in August. For teens, sign up for drawing classes in August and look for science kits, art kits, and more while we imagine our stories together. Don't forget to drop your ballots off at the ballot box on the north side of the library by the book drop. I am so excited to announce the confirmation of Jeff Vogel as our new library director that was conferred by the City Council last Monday night. Jeff has served as our interim director during COVID times, and we are excited to welcome him officially as director of the Anacortes Public Library. Congratulations, Jeff Vogel. Several months ago, Dr. Liebran issued guidance to the county to cancel large-scale summer events. On Monday of this week, the guidance was extended. The county commissioners recommended canceling large-scale events through December 31, 2020. This includes fairs, parades, festivals, overnight residential camps, fireworks displays, and any other large group gathering throughout the summer and into the fall. COVID-19 spreads quickly in large groups, and with the current rise in cases, the commissioners felt the associated risk of these events was too great. We had all hoped we would, that we have, would have gotten this virus under control by this point, but we're seeing the opposite. Dr. Lee Brown is telling all Skagitonians that the way things are right now should set the expectation for what living with COVID-19 is going to be like for the foreseeable future. 
The city council meetings uh, will start being held in a Zoom webinar format starting Monday, April, August 10th. You can now attend your city council meeting, be part of your city council meeting. We will post instructions on the city's website, and if you want to participate in the meeting, please call 360-299-1960. 299-1960. You can provide comments in multiple ways, via email, by e-comment, and now via live comment on Zoom. You'll be right there with us and the City Council at our Council meetings, and we look forward to having you back with us during these important Monday night meetings. The school superintendent, Dr. Justin Irish, shared yesterday that the Anacortes School Board recently approved an updated school calendar for the 2020 and 21 school year. The school year will now start Monday, September 14th and end Monday, June 21st, 2021. The updated calendar is posted on the school district's website. This shifted start allows us to provide more staff training in September before school starts. The district is continuing to build on its homeschool platform and long term hybrid learning model this year. That hybrid learning model will likely take off as full remote learning option. There are a number of complexities and full in-person model will likely be phased in. Exact dates and other details continue to be finalized. We will keep you updated as Dr. Irish continues to develop the district's plan. Island Hospital has tested a total of 3,157 people in our community with a total of 48 positive cases, eight positive hospitalized cases, and there have been no deaths in Anacortes. We have seen an increase of 14 cases in the last month in Anacortes. There has been 15,000 tests with 339 people testing positive so far. If you've been exposed to COVID-19, please quarantine and after five to seven days, then come and get tested anytime between Monday and Friday between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the Skagit Valley College. The county has been experiencing high volumes of people on Mondays, topping 500 people and a wait time of three hours. If you're able to visit the site on another day, the county is recommending you do so. You do not need to get re repeat tested unless you've had exposure to COVID-19 again. We need to effectively use our resources. This testing infrastructure is a pivotal part of stamping out COVID in our county. It's run by volunteers from our community who are committed to helping Skagit County. Globally, we have 6.6 million cases and over 658,000 people have died worldwide due to COVID-19. The actual number estimated may even be much higher because of the limited testing and minor cases that go unreported. Across the country, in the United States, we have seen 4.3 million cases there have been 150,000 people that have lost their lives. And in Washington State, we currently have had over 53,000 cases and 1,518 people who have died. Experimental COVID-19 vaccine trials are starting to be underway. Just on Monday, 30,000 Americans received shots from the U.S. government in a study with which potential vaccine created by the National Institute, Institute of Health and Modera. We will see the results of this trial. We won't see the results of this trial for many months, but as the World Health Organization cites a doubling of cases 
over the past six weeks, there's a glimmer of hope in this active fight against COVID. So now I'm at my questions and answers, and I was sent one question this week. The question is, are masks required while in the forest lands? Most of the trails are too narrow to practice social distancing, and very few people wear masks. If masks are required, would it be possible to post the information at various trail heads? Masks are required per the governor's orders in all outdoor public areas, including public parks, trails, streets, sidewalks, and other recreational areas when six feet of distancing cannot be maintained. That means if you're meeting a friend at the park, you will need to wear a mask when you're with them. Or if at the park has several people walking around and visiting you, you will need to wear a mask. And if the width of the trail is less than six feet and there are others on the trail, you're required to wear a mask. The Parks Department is committed to getting the information about mask requirement and the importance of wearing masks. We're happy to have people enjoy the Anacortes Community Forest Lands. However, because of the increase in people, that, that means social distancing becomes more difficult. So I recommend that you have a mask with you at all times. And if you start to walk alone and find there's another visitor who cannot maintain social distancing, you'll be prepared to put that mask on. So these times have continued to challenge us. When we all became aware of the coronavirus in late January or early February, our understanding at first was that really it was no big deal. It would last a few weeks or maybe a couple months, but it grew into a global pandemic. And we all did what we needed to do. We stayed home. We isolated with, with, from, from family and friends. We closed our schools. We closed our public institutions and we closed our beloved businesses. We thought we had this done, we'd have this done in a few weeks or a few months and everything would return to normal. But then the term new normal became part of our vocabulary. The government provided federal funding through the CARES Act for the unemployed and businesses to keep their doors open. Parts of the economy have thrived Bicycle sales, boat sales, RV sales, online sales. But small retail and the hospitality and travel industry have taken heavy financial hits. We've all learned to use technology to meet, work, learn, recreate, and for our health care needs. Our global perspective of how small the planet we live on has become more evident every day. Every community, large or small, in every country across the globe has been impacted. There's been intense emotions, frustrations, politics, addressing systemic racism that's become part of our daily landscape. Our state governors have had to take draconian steps to flatten the, the cause of the COVID cases we have become fatigued from the restrictions and we've lightened our resolve. And today we have 106 cases for 100,000 in Skagit County. Starting tomorrow, we're mandated to follow stricter restrictions. We must do this for our health, for our economy, for our community. Please mass with me to save our town. This is not the first time Anacortes has done what needs to be done in a pandemic. I want to share with you today the minutes of the October 8th, 1918 Anacortes City Council meeting. Be it remembered that the City Council of the City of Anacortes did on the eighth day of October 1918 meet in a special session with Councilmen Gibbons, Hagen, Jackson, McCallan, Trafton, and Queen responding to roll call. Absent was Beesner. Due to the absence of Mayor Cook, 
the council upon motion elected councilman B. H. McCallum as mayor pro tem. The special summons for attendance of the councilman was read and upon motion adopted. The purpose of the meeting, it was to consider placing the city under quarantine for influenza and Dr. H. E. Frost, acting as deputy health officer, addressed the council, urging the necessity of quarantine and asking the council to uphold him. Mr. Sam Mendelson, representing the theater's interests, addressed the council relative to the quarantine. Upon motion, the city council vested authority in Dr. Frost to act in accordance with his judgment relative to the closing, the closing of all places of public gathering. Roll calls I was Gibbons, Hagen, Jackson, McCallum, Trapton, and Queen. Nyes were none. Upon motion, the council did then adjourn. This was approved in open council the following week, October 15, 1918, signed by Mayor Cook. Next week on Wednesday, the city staff will provide the community with the briefing on Channel 10 at 4 p.m. And I will be back with you the following week, August 12th. So join me, be kind, wear a mask, and take care of our town.